Okay, continuing part three. I'm going to go run back up. This is by Lynn at f.clynne at gmail.com. A serious and timely call from the Lord. Now, let's see if I can find my place again. Deafen mute. Okay. Need to do it timely because... Okay. In the midst of this very detailed and serious word, I could feel the pleading heart of the Lord because he loves us. I could feel his insistence that this must happen and happen now. Stop looking at the women for right now, for I have need of you. Look in the mirror and consider your ways and the ways which have permeated the entire culture around you, bringing many into captivity because of the spirit of arrogance, entitlement, religious hypocrisy, and delusion. I now invite you to repent so the spirit of delusion will be broken off you and your nation. And after you do, then I want you to look at the women in your life in your church, on your jobs, and prayer groups, and ask me, Father, have I sinned, dishonored, or, dis or counted as less than any of these women whom you created and whom you sent your only begotten son to bleed and die for? I say, start with your house, your sisters, wives, daughters, mothers, and ask me, Father, have I despised these women? Have I aligned myself with Satan in this war uh, um, against them? Hallelujah. And if you are brave enough, I will tell you so that you can repent and turn from that wicked path and begin to walk with me and like me in walk with me and like me in true honor and truth and break the curse Satan keeps bringing around generation after generation against many women. Hallelujah. Repent for those societal and church fathers in your own bloodline who released over many women false judgments, and unnecessary, caustic, venomous, critical, harsh, and nasty words thinking they were doing me a service. They were not. John 16, 2, 3. Many of my people are praying regarding the spirit of Islam, which has risen up in so many corners of the world and even arrogantly in this nation. But I say to you, unless my body aligns with my heart concerning women, you will in no way be able to defeat this antichrist spirit, for you have the same exact mindset as the captives and slaves of Islam regarding women. Yes, you do. In your hearts, you do. Let me take that stony art out which harbors this ideology on the inside, for I need clean gatekeepers and watchmen in this land. What you are not delivered of, you cannot keep out of the land, and by your misalignment, actually grant it legal grounds for being in the land, because you are in agreement with it in your heart and in the spirit realm. That's absolute truth. So repent of these things, the Lord said, and no longer agree with them while there is yet time. And I will pour out my spirit in a way that you could not even imagine on my sons and my daughters, as I promised. For didn't I say I long to kill two birds with one stone? I want to unlock the voices of my daughters, for a great company of women shall run with the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Um, Psalm 68, 11 to 13. The Lord gives the command. The women who proclaim the good tidings are a great host. Kings of armies flee. They flee, and she who remains at home will divide the spoil. Hallelujah. And by this, I make a way of escape, the Lord said, for many other captive women and men who have been deceived by an exceedingly crafty, perverse, and unclean spirit, and set them free from every wound and deception they have lived and encountered. And in this, I will release godly sorrow to them, which is my kindness and my promise, which will lead them to repentance and set them free. Hallelujah. When my daughters are unlocked, when their voices are restored, amped up and released, I shall also deliver many who have been in bondage to the principality of prostitution, which is rooted in the land, both male and female, and even the land itself, which is groaning. For the creation will rejoice and be cleansed of the iniquity. For remember, when the cup of iniquity in the land is full, the land will vomit out the offenders. Repent, for many enemies are at the gate and already here, longing to displace the people of this land. It is much deeper than just securing your borders. Remember that before Israel did take the promised land, I said that the land vomited out the people before them who had been living there. 
Again, I say that I'm pleased at how far you have come. Yes, to my praying remnant, I say I am pleased, but keep following closely with me. Hear my voice and obey me, for I hear you in your prayers, and I long to bring an exceedingly great deliverance to your nation, which will impact families, nations, and eternity. I heard the Lord say the name Ahab, and what about Ahab? I say that Ahab was a lazy man, the Lord said, for he did not govern his own heart first. As king or as a leader, governance and self-control must start within yourself. This is why it is said one must work out their own salvation with fear and tremblings, Philippians 2.12. My kingdom starts first in you. This is why I'm inviting my people to repent first, for I am coming to clean house. If you judge, ponder, and consider yourself in me first. You won't be judged in the midst of the fellowship. 1 Corinthians 11, 31 and 32. But I say, because of the lies of the spirit of Jezebel, the men who believe these lies regarding the acceptability of sexual immorality as servants of God, yoke the women they violate to them, and the men, I might add, and, and join them to that spirit of Jezebel operating through them in marriage. There is a price cost for this. And since they refuse to govern their own heart by giving me their stony heart, there is a cost. Fifty shekels was to be paid for a woman who was violated. This cost is the first fruit offering of bond, for bondage. Fifty is symbolic of jubilee. It is through this price that many lose their freedom. Selah. And without repentance, such a man can never divorce this woman. And though you have gone through the Baal divorce decree, remember that Jezebel served Baal. And that cry, that shriek, that bitterness, wrath, and rage, that twisted and depraved voice shall attend to such a man always as a terrible reminder of the violation. Is this the voice you want forced, forever released over this land? Then you must stand in the gap and repent. And when you do, my holy blood will come and finalize the divorce. Hallelujah. And in that moment, the Lord allowed me to see the yellow school bus number again, 1929 again. And I clearly realize that our society trains and schools women to all forms of prostitution from their youth. My heart was heavy. He continued softly. My church, repent for aligning with a culture which trains women to the spirit of prostitution by focusing on their outer appearance and assigning a value to their soul based only on this instead of based on the fact that I created them and that I love them and that I came to redeem their souls. This is one of the ways that the transfer of wealth has been held back. How? Read Proverbs 31. And repent for ignoring, dishonoring, robbing, and silencing the righteous women I have placed all around you. For when they're dishonored, eventually I allow them to be replaced by women who match the hardness of your own hearts with an ugly screeching cry. If you have one around you like this, perhaps you have walked in dishonor somewhere and you need to repent so that cry is quieted with my blood. And to my daughters, suddenly the Lord shifted focus momentarily to address the daughters. And he said, and to my daughters, keep holding on, for I have not forgotten you, nor have I forsaken you. Many of you, I will do a deep healing work on the inside, for you have sought legitimacy and validation, which I always intended you to have. Embrace and walk in it, and you were systemically, systematically blocked from receiving it from me. So you did the best you could with what you had and sought for that legitimacy and validation from many within my body and outside my body and found very little and at other times found outright abuse. But I say it's okay now, for the wrongs are being righted. Hold fast. You can stand in the gap and lend your forgiveness for all the pain and sorrow. You can repent for holding on to anger. You can repent for not seeking me above all others to free you. You can repent for any and all poison fuel you have released against other women who have suffered similar to you. For these gossipy orphan speeches have caused many demonic fires to flame up into big uncontrolled satanic flames. I tell you the truth, beloved. You cannot carry my fire and stoke the flames of the enemy in the lives of other people at the same time. This message to my body is not condemnation, no, it's conviction. My people have mistaken the sting of, or conviction for condemnation. Receive the tiny sting of conviction, for I am not condemning you. There's no condemnation if you're in me. Conviction is course direction. 
Beloved, male and female, if you find this difficult, I feel your heart and I understand. I have seen all you suffered. I am arising as your true father now. Just come to me and I will give you grace to forgive. Little by little, measure by measure, much grace, not by your power of strength, but by your willingness and my grace. Ha, and when you forgive, great grace will be made within you to receive my glory in a very profound and beautiful way. Then you'll be uncapped, unstopped, and unlocked, and you will rush forward into the vacuum that has been in this land and fill it with my words and my truth. Pray for the body. Pray for your brothers. Pray for your sisters. Pray. I say to all, come, come into the secret place and let us reason together and see what I do in secret. I will reward you openly. Shared by the Lord. Okay, so Lynn had this marvelous word and I, as I got to the end, I'm thinking of some male friends who've been abused by women in the same way that she's talking about the men here. There are women who've molested young boys or treated them awfully and emasculated them, maybe because they went through this very thing. And so it perpetuates the cycle of misogyny and hatred and misandry, you know, uh, where, you know, women hate men. So um, if there's any of that in your family, you also need to repent for that, ladies, um, if you know of it. And that's a large problem, too, is that many of us don't. So um, I think that's why this word is so important, that all of us could repent for the sake of the nation, for, this, for the sake of, you know, what God wants to do in turning it around. We have to walk in holiness. We have to walk in righteousness. His heart is broken, and he wants to bring the healing and the salvation for the people around us. And will we love them like he loves them? Because that's where he's been taking us. He's been trying to heal us and deliver us so that we'll have his love in these situations. And um, I'll just share with you a, 